Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward, joined by Spencer Holbrook and my other colleague, Jeremy Birmingham, who's also my nemesis for this purpose. Yes. This is the first time that we have ever done this. We probably should have done it in the past, but we never have. So we, there is no Ohio State spring game on Saturday, but we were getting ready to cover one. We wanted to break one down. We wanted to talk about it uh, with the Buckeyes. So the next best option was for me and Berm to draft our own teams. That's why I've got my coach's hat on. I've got, you know, the horseshoe behind me ready. It was, it was supposed to be a great Saturday uh, to close out spring football. Um, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to win with a virtual victory over Berm. So we can happen. Spencer, I'll let you take control here and sort of tee off what we did with our, our scarlet and gray draft. Should we, should we note first that Austin won the coin toss? Austin won the coin toss, and that means he got the first pick. Well, I was going to get there. What did, I, what did I concede if someone didn't get the first pick? So we said that if the fir- first pick happens, everyone knows that's going to be Justin Fields. And then the second person, in this case myself and the winning team, got to pick three straight players. And then Austin would pick two. Then I'd pick two until we finished a 22-man roster that does not include special teams um, and where we tried to fill in position by position. And – there's no substitutions. Like we're not. There wasn't the assumption that Fields would just get one, one series and get pulled. Uh, you know, this would be as close to just running out these ones versus ones as we could possibly get. And it includes everyone that is not excluded from spring practice by Ohio State. So guys like Sean Wade, Chris Olave, who were limited this spring or were expected to be limited this spring, are included. But players like. Ryan, um, I'm sorry, Josh Proctor or not, because he was not going to be back this spring. There were six players that were initially ruled out for all of spring by Ohio State, or five initially, then Master Teague after the first practice. Those players are not in it. So those were the rules, Chives. What do you have for us? All right. So the first thing I want to ask you guys about is, obviously, Austin. Well, first of all, I did the coin toss. So <laughs> I, found a, I found a gold dollar in my house. Uh, I sent – The heads, the tails to them, it was not like the Big Ten commemorative coin that we have to hear from the officials every week. We didn't have any of that. It was just a gold dollar with, I think, is it Sacagawea on it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, I flipped it. Austin was heads. Berm was tails just because I randomly said Austin was heads. Heads I want to make sure that I argue this point before we even get going. Austin and I were speaking privately before we uh, asked for your help, and he asked me if I wanted heads or tails, and I said I wanted heads. And then he – Listen to these. Listen to these heads from you when you gave it to him, even though we had already privately agreed that I would have hey, heads. The independent anyway. arbitrator Spencer Holbrook made the call. You can't. You have no anyway. case here. Anyway, I always call tails, so I thought Berm, you would get tails because I'm I'm usually pretty pretty rock solid with tails. Uh, I bet you're fifty percent on tails. <laughs> Just my it's my 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 guess. Sixty forty. Uh, so, anyways. Austin, obviously, Justin Fields was the first pick. That's a no-brainer. It was easy. He's pretty, he, I think he's going to be the number one pick next year in the draft. Right. Uh, so, he's the first pick in our draft. Uh, Berm, let's talk strategy. Berm, what, what went into those next three picks? Well, I had to go after guys who could get on Justin Fields first. So, the way you stop any good quarterback is by rushing the passer. So, I took Tyreek Smith and Zach Harrison with my first two picks. And then, in an attempt to mitigate – the damage of fields. I took away his top receiving threat and took Chris Olave third. Okay. So here's the thing, Austin, you take a quarterback number one. Yep. So by default, you don't need a second quarterback. Berm, tell me about your quarterback situation. How you, how you decided to draft this. I mean, I waited until the last pick and I went all the way to, to the 44th or 43rd pick and picked CJ Stroud. And I took him over Gunnar Hoke. Uh, just because I think if we're talking a four-quarter game with the weapons that I feel I was able to put around him, I think he would bring me a little bit more of a dynamicism. Is that a word? Sure, it is now. A more, dynam- a more dynamic approach to my offense um, than Gunnar Hoke. And I understand that Stroud has practiced three times at Ohio State. But, <laughs> you know, I'm going to assume this, we're, this entire thing is based on the assumption that these guys developed – from March till now. I think I probably would have done the same thing, Spencer, that the first day, the only one that we saw 
the first day of camp was about as impressive as I've ever seen an early enrollee, true freshman quarterback look. And who knows what could have happened after that. He was going to have bad days, good days and bad days throughout camp. But C.J. Stroud, I think this kid has incredible upside. And I, I kind of I, I kind of thought that would be the way that Burnham was going to go because that's what I would have done too. Um, Gunnar Hoke certainly has more familiarity with the offense and, and maybe we'll have this conversation whenever football comes back that, you know, does Hoke's veteran presence and a year of knowing the system, does that make him the first guy off the bench? But I think it you're probably looking, does in a short term situation. Yeah. But if you're looking in this spring game format and trying to match the firepower that I put together on my offense, you probably want Stroud. All right. So let's talk about it, Austin. You, uh, so let's just get the running backs out of the way. So the running back situation at Ohio State for spring ball was basically Steel Chambers, Demario McCall, and then I think Xavier Johnson was taking some reps at running back. Yes. And that just tells you what was going on with the running back situation. So, Austin, you take Steel Chambers. I don't know what round. Uh, I can pull it up. Uh, Berm, you take Demario McCall. Yeah, actually, situation- McCall got picked first um, in the way that this shook out. They both went in the 16th round. And because we're both understanding, I think, that – this spring was not going to be about the Ohio State running game because of the lack of depth, because of, uh, you know, trying to implement three new quarterbacks basically into the system, all the new receivers. I went with McCall, even though he's practiced at wide receiver this spring, because he's played more running back than Steel Chambers. And again, because he's a versatile player. Um, And that was my goal was to get somebody who would be uh, a pass catcher out of the backfield, as opposed to just a, you know, an I formation running back. Yeah, this might shock both of you guys, but if it was getting about to the point where, because I had gone, uh, you know, Garrett Wilson was my first pick after he came back to me after Berm took Olave. Uh, I already had, you know, that weapon out there. I already had Jeremy Ruckert. You know, I was planning to throw the football around. I had Jamison Williams, those three guys out there at wide receiver. I I wasn't really that concerned uh, about – what was going to happen at running back. But if I was, I wanted to try and sneak in McCall just to give that offense even more flexibility, I would have taken him over steel chambers. Um, and, and as much as I've been critical of DeMario throughout his career, I think he would have been a, a nice piece for what I was building right here. So uh, steel chambers, isn't going to get a lot of carries for this offense. He is, he's weapon, you know, number five, uh, or, or even, you know, we'll see how often I wanted to use him in this spring game against Burns defense that he put together. But I, I wasn't frankly that concerned about what I had at tailback and there weren't a lot of options either. So once, once he took McCall, you know, steel chambers was the, was the guy there. Cause we didn't have Trey Sermon available or Marcus Crowley. And I think this is a good launching point because I think we can break, start to break down Austin's offensive line, which I think is just a bunch of run graders can be very, very good uh, up front against Burns defensive line which is kind of a pass rush heavy defensive line. I don't know if you strategize that berm, but Austin, that's, Absolutely that's I did. yeah, I'm not very happy about it either. I am not happy about it. Absolutely. That I did. I, I, I have a Rushman package on the field. So let's start there. For an I entire have, game. You're going to go with the Rushman package. That's right. I got Tyreek Smith. I moved him inside in, in my plan here. So I have Tyreek Smith at defensive tackle along with Tommy Togiai and then Jonathan Cooper, who I got uh, what in, in round uh, 10, is my opposite defensive end with Tyreek Smith. And then on top of that, what I really wanted to do was put versatile linebackers. So I have Baron Browning, um, Pete Warner in the middle, and then Justin Hilliard on the other outside spot. So uh, that was really the goal was to really load up my front seven because once Austin took Cam Brown and seven banks back to back in the third and fourth round, uh, I'm sorry, fourth, fourth and fifth round, I had to get flexible. I do have Sean Wade anchoring my, my secondary, but I have to get to the passer and I have to have linebackers that can play in space and play in coverage. And so that's why I went with the group I went with. And I, had to I be, think it's interesting. Yeah. Sorry, Spencer. I had to be aggressive to counter that with my offensive line. You touched on him. I took Wyatt Davis as my third pick uh, just to build around that anchor. And then it kind of got a little bit uh, squirrely for me because I had uh, Nicholas Petit Frere, Frere uh, I, w- I got wound up with three starters, but the third being Harry Miller. And then what do, what do I want to do there um, at the center or guard spot? So Harry Miller is going to play center for my team, and I picked Luke Whipler. I've also got a little bit of uncertainty there. I'm counting a lot on Dewan Jones at left tackle uh, to really develop and make have made the most of that spring because those guys are going to be under pressure. But especially if Burns going to be in the Rushman package, 
I had to have those guys that could hold up uh, on the interior. I don't want to get in matchups where, you know, Tyreek Smith and Tommy Togi are, are living one-on-one. I feel pretty good with Justin Fields' mobility behind three, you know, fifths of the, of the projected Ohio State starting offensive line. I actually I think, really like my offensive line. I think my I, I think I would take mine over yours. That's what I think. Well, Spencer, I think, Spencer I think impartial, inter- impartial. What do you think? It, it, take take our offensive lines. I got Thayer Munford, Matthew Jones, Josh Myers, Enoch Vamahi, and Paris Johnson. I think if you're going with if if I had to choose one side of an offensive line to run behind at any point in this game. I'm taking Harry Miller, Wyatt Davis, and NPF, and I'm yeah, I'm going to run said, behind him. You said run behind, though. I, he he's got I, no, an offense no matter, predicated on the pass. But that that side of the offensive line, and I also think it's really bold of Berm to move Tyreek Smith to the inside because I think he's a good speed rusher, and then he's going to have to go against Harry Miller and Wyatt Davis, and I just think that's really interesting to try and do when you could move a guy like Cooper who might be a little bit stronger to the inside and really the, try and try and get the vision. Pop I don't know the vision. The vision I have for Tyreek Smith is the role that Adolphus Washington played for Ohio State. He's a little bit lighter, but he's still in that six foot three, six four, two hundred and seventy pound range. And that's why I think that of the defensive ends I had, he's the guy that makes the most sense to move inside. I would probably if it were me, I would probably put Harrison there, but uh, you know, wherever you want to put him, he's gonna get blocked. So that's I'm, I'm cool <laughs> with him. All right. So I take Austin's offensive line, but Berm, your defensive line, I think you did a good job there. Berm, you touched on the linebackers. Um, I like your linebackers. I think you did a good job with them. Austin it's really interesting. You took the trio, the three musketeers, whatever you want to call them. You the took the trio. 2018 class. <laughs> yeah, of Taraja Mitchell, uh, Kavon Pope, and Dallas Gantt. Those are your three linebackers. Uh, is, was that a plan, or did it just happen like that? It was sort of, you know, reactive to what Byrne did. I wanted, I wanted Taraja to get some run. I know how, how motivated he was for this spring. Uh, I think when you look at upside of any, any of the linebackers on this team, the two – most physically gifted are Baron Browning and Taraji Mitchell. So if you don't get one, you want the other. And I personally just wanted Mitchell. I think that he's got uh, a lot to prove coming off of last year, not getting the playing time that he, you know, wanted to because of injury. Um, but then it was also, you know, I had to decide where I wanted to build. And I knew that, you know, Berm is rolling out a true freshman quarterback in the spring and I can't let him load up in the defensive backfield. So I went early uh, with Seven Banks and Cameron Brown, you guys both know that I've written about Cam Brown a bunch. I think that he uh, it can be a very good uh, player for Ohio State this year. And Seven Banks, Spencer, you just wrote about him and the way that he's physically, you know, changed heading into the spring before it was over. Uh, and then you know, I, Marcus Hooker, when Josh Proctor's not available, you need to have a safety back there. So I wanted to build and make sure that there was going to be a test to try and account for Chris Olave and and maybe put some strain on C.J. Stroud. So I, I just – I built around the secondary, and then, you know, Byrne made an emphasis to get Pete Warner and Baron Browning, which he needs to, to try and slow down my offense. And so it just kind of worked out that way. But I, I also really think that all three of those guys, you look at the returning linebackers for Ohio State, you know, it's going to be tough to unseat Browning, Warner, and Tough Borland. But those next three guys are really, really good. And now Washington's looking at a situation where – you know, all six of those guys could be in the mix and, and in the rotation playing a lot. So I sort of felt like I wound up with uh, guys that were starting caliber uh, and not really true backups. Yeah, I mean, I certainly – the secondary, and I guess all spring we thought, thought about the secondary needs some experience and all that. But as you see the guys that are on this list, I mean, I have seven early enrollee freshmen <laughs> out of my 22 guys. And obviously it's a really talented group, but three of those guys are in the secondary where I picked back to back to back court Williams, Ryan Watson, and legend Cavazos. And the, the reasoning for that is because they're flexible guys. And that's really what I was going for on defense. Watts can play the safety spot or corner. Same for Cavazos. Court Williams can move up and play linebacker and, and, and play in the box if needed. The goal was to find guys that were flexible enough and, and uh, athletic enough to, to guard the wide receivers on the edge, but also to be physical uh, with Jeremy Ruckert and, and uh, Steel Chambers if Austin's offense tried to, you know, get physical. So I think the craziest thing about this, this entire project is when I first saw the lists, I said, Austin, your secondary is going to eat. I mean, your, your wide receivers are going to eat because Berm's secondary is young. Yeah. But now I look at Berm's wide receivers. 
And I don't think it matters what secondary you put out there. This wide receiver group is going to be fantastic uh, for Ohio State in 2020. But the lists here that you guys put together just for this draft, it's pretty insane the talent that's on this team, a wide receiver. It's, it's like if you put Trey Sermon into this offense with these wide receivers, this offense is not going to miss a beat despite missing J.K. Dobbins. That's why I think I can win this game because I don't think that Austin's pass rush is going to put enough pressure on C.J. Stroud to mitigate uh, Chris Olave, Julian Fleming, and Jackson Smith and Jigba against his secondary, which Tyreek Johnson, Marcus Hooker uh, have almost played zero. And obviously you have Seven Banks and Cam, Johnson, and Cam Brown, but I, I don't know that his linebackers are fast enough to, to slow down the receivers in, in the uh, zone passing game like, like my linebackers are. I think where Berm is going to have to attack is in the seams because I think Tyreek Johnson and Marcus Hooker back at safety – could be could be something of a concern because of their inexperience, and you also have Luke Farrell, who we've seen Luke Farrell make make some decent plays. Luke Farrell is one of the most underrated players in the yeah. last fifteen years in Ohio State. Yeah, so if you get if you get something down the seam, you could have something there with Jackson Smith and Jigba, which we he he was fantastic in early spring practice before everything got shut down. And then Luke, if you have Luke Farrell and Jackson Smith and Jigba on the inside with Chris Olave and Julian Fleming on the outside, there's going to be some issues there. Well, look. I was not happy when Jonathan Cooper popped up in the draft. I assumed when he had Tyreek Smith and Zach Harrison that that was it, that, you know, we had agreed on a normal roster. I didn't know we were going full Rushman or I would have taken Cooper earlier. But even still, even with him taking those three guys, there's so much depth in Larry Johnson's defensive line group. I'm fine. If Tyler Friday is the fourth best of that group, I'm going to get pressure with Tyler Friday. Javante John Baptiste with another year under his belt with Mickey Marotti in that offseason. I'm fine turning those two guys oh, on. You got, you got plenty of upside. You got Teron Vincent at defensive tackle. You got Haskell Garrett. You got plenty of upside. You, what, you, what you lack there is game experience on your defense. And that's why I think my defense would be, aside from the secondary, where I obviously have three true freshmen, uh, but their, their upside is very high. So I, I'm confident that you let those puppies, you know, bite. That's what I mean. This is – this is my next question, and I think it's going to be one of, one of my last questions. I've got a couple more. I see round 17, and, like, round 17 might be kind of irrelevant in most drafts because it's the 17th round. But yeah. Berm takes Jackson Smith and Jigba, who was, like I said, a star in the first couple of days of spring practice. And Austin grabs Teron Benson, who I don't know if I've voiced this enough, but I think he's going to be one of the major players in this defense uh, moving forward. I think last year he could have had a – a good year had he been healthy. And I think he's going to take a big step forward this offseason. Uh, I think round 17 is going to be one of the stories of this, of this game. Well, and that's, and I think it goes back to what I was saying about my defensive line. He, you know, Berm, Berm wants to throw, you know, accusations about my young defense and experienced <laughs> defense. He's trying to block Teron Vincent and Haskell Garrett with Matthew Jones and Enoch Vumahi. And Vumahi, I think has incredible upside as well. Uh, but Jones has been several years in the program. He's, he's just going to be a serviceable backup in his career at Ohio State from what I've seen. And, you know, good luck. Josh Myers is obviously going to help there. But I debated. I went back and forth between Matthew Jones and Ryan Jacoby there, and I went with Jones because he's actually played in games before where Jacoby really hasn't. So that was a, it was a concern of mine, but there's no doubt about it. You went with Wyatt Davis with your third overall pick, and that's a building block in the interior line. And once you start to – to piece this all together, you look at it and there's the Buckeyes have a ton of talent, but a lot of these guys in that second and third layer of the offensive line just haven't played yet. And, as, and for your question, Spencer, I, I was certainly, you know, optimistic that Jackson Smith and Jigbo would fall uh, to give me, you know, another compliment. I wound up with G Scott as the third guy, which I'm not going to complain about at all because it still allows me uh, to do sort of what Ohio state was planning to do this spring with Garrett Wilson if I could put Jamison Williams and G Scott on the outside and let Garrett Wilson play in the slot and move around Jeremy Ruckert, I, I think there's going to be a, a long day for Berm's defensive coordinator to try and figure out a way to slow that down. It's just, Who is my defensive coordinator? <laughs> uh, I, I think oh, what I we've know. learned here is the Ohio State roster is pretty loaded. Yeah, that's, that is the takeaway. Yeah, I, I think – and that's the last question I was going to have. When, you, when you're able to get a 60-year guy – like Justin Hilliard, 
in the last round berm other than drafting CJ Stroud. And Austin, you're able to get a guy like Haskell Garrett in the very last round. That just shows the depth that this team has. You know, there's going to be a lot of questions surrounding this team, especially not being able to have spring and be able to develop uh, this defense. But when you get two defenders like that in the late rounds, that tells you what this team can be. Well, I think that it's uh, intuitive or instructional to, to go through this, have this exercise and look at what you could do if you had this amount of talent. Because I've been in other places where if you don't draft the first team offense in a game like this or a hypothetical game, you're really going to be up against it. There won't be enough pieces to go around. And Berm and I could both make really good cases for our entire roster because Ohio State has drafted, or, you know, rec recruited and developed so much better uh, than almost any other program in the country that their full two deep is full of guys that could already have been stars elsewhere. Uh, and that's, you know, what kind of made it spirited to go through this. But I think when you really – when you're sitting down and, and looking at the pieces yourself and trying to put together a draft board and a game plan and you can pick and choose and do almost anything, like we already know that because we cover the team and we know all these guys, but it's not like we had to grasp at a straw and be like, Ooh, I don't know if this could really work out. Like, you know, I, I poked, you know, I, I said that Matthew Jones probably going to be a backup. Well, he probably already would have been starting in almost any big 10 school in the country. Right. He's three years in and, yeah, still and that might, and that might never, happened for him in Ohio State, which is not a knock on him. Uh, he was, you know, had a, he was out there getting some pretty good reps on that first day that we got to, got to watch. You know, all these guys that we went through 44 could play or have played for the Big Ten champions. That's, that's a crazy amount to, or a crazy thing to think about. Yeah, and, and I, think, I think the only area where you would, you would start to grasp, like you keep talking about, is that offensive line. But like you said, even then – these guys are all have all had game experience at least a little bit. You know, Enoch was supposed to be gone for this spring, and he's not. He's he's back, and and they project him to be you know a guy who can really contribute to this program. It is just kind of interesting, and I'm glad you guys did this exercise because it gives me, even as somebody who covers the team, a new perspective on okay, what's this situation look like? Because you're not really going into the roster and saying, well, it's getting a little hairy at this spot. You know, you got defensive ends and defensive tackles and linebackers. All of them can play. And I think that shows that that just shows, you know, Larry Johnson's going to have uh, a good unit to roll out there. Uh, Al Washington's good. You know, he's going to have a good unit to roll out there. Kerry Combs is going to have a little bit of work to do with how young the secondary is, but even then it's going to be, be good. And then the offense is just, you know, it takes care of itself because it's, it's Ryan day's offense. So I, I'm, I'm just gonna say thank you guys for doing this exercise. It, it was great. I hope people enjoy it. So Spencer, we know Austin picks his team to win. Uh, I also pick Austin's team to win because he has the best player in America on his team. And that's, that's a difference maker that I can't overcome no matter how much strategizing I try to do. What's the final score of this game? The final score of this game. Um, oh gosh. <sighs> okay. So I think, I think Austin's team comes in pretty Spencer, I want you to create a box score for how this game goes. <laughs> if you're lucky, I might do it, do some uh, NCAA 14 work on this game. Uh, if I can do it, I don't know if I'll be able to do it because the rosters aren't updated you just blew yet. blew my mind. I mean, you can update those yourself. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do then. We'll get back to you maybe in like a month. Cause that'll be a passion project. Um, but I think Austin's team comes in a little too confident. Um, I think Berm probably takes an early lead and kind of punches him in the mouth. And I think Austin kind of roars back. Maybe it's like 14 to, to 7 or something like that, Austin, uh, Berm's team, and then Austin comes back. I think this game probably ends up like 35-24 Austin's team wins. Uh, but I think Berm, I think your team is, is pretty good, Berm, uh, for the yeah. circumstance of not getting Justin Fields. The, when you have the, a trans, the simple trans fact of the matter is he's the best player in America, and that's, that is not something that I can out overdraft. Yeah, I, I think – I think when you have a transcendent player like Justin Fields on your team, it's, it's going to be hard for anyone to beat you. We've already seen that 14 times that, uh, in the past season. Uh, it should have been probably 15 times. Uh, so if you have the best player on the field, it's hard to lose, especially at the quarterback position. So uh, I think Austin team get the dub, gets the dub here, but sorry, Berm. That's all right. I understand. Always feels good to get a win. Uh, if people want to vote on this themselves and continue to make me feel good about my fantastic game plan and drafting, we're going to throw this up on the Letterman Road Twitter account, Instagram. Uh, Fantastic game plan. You've got heads. <laughs> you know, it, that's how 
winners just make the best of the situation uh, that they're dealt, and uh, I feel good about it. So, yeah, it helps that I have Justin Fields. There's no question, but, you know, we are – it's a team sport. We're going to spread it. Let me pose this. Uh, I want this to be answered by the readers and watchers in two different ways here. Look at both teams, and if Justin Fields was on each team, who wins? And then, obviously, assuming that Austin has Justin Fields against my team, he clearly wins that matchup head-to-head. But if you take the other 21 players from each, or from each team and put Justin Fields as the all-time quarterback, who wins? Yeah, that's – I just said the reason I picked Austin's team was because Justin Fields is a transcendent athlete. Ooh, so- sick burn. I, I think my team would win if Justin Fields was quarterback in both teams. That's all I'm saying. So well, what wish in, what, firm wish in one hand and, you know, the saying. No, I don't. But see Tell which one it. fills up faster. Tell me it. Okay. I, that, even, that's all, that's all I can do. This is, that's a hypothetical of a hypothetical. That's right. I wouldn't have drafted the same roster if I didn't have Justin Fields. Hmm. I drafted to beat you, and I did it. Well, we'll see. You admitted it. And, unfortunately, this is the best thing that we can manage with an Ohio State spring game. Uh, hopefully everything will – work itself out and we can get back to breaking down real life football soon enough. I uh, appreciate Berm for taking some time out to draft with me and have a little fun. Taking the L here. <laughs> Another L for him, of course, and for Spencer Holbrook putting this uh, all together for us behind the scenes. This as always has been Letterman Row. Hope you enjoyed some of this content and stick with us uh, throughout the next few months when we get back to football as soon as possible. See you then. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buckeye Key with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.